And today, uh, we're going to talk, uh, introduce to you some more online resources. There are many of them. Okay, so now let's take a look. Did I mention that you should change everything into the English mode? Your BB, your Facebook, your cell phone. Okay, change it into English mode. Then every day you'll have a chance to read some English, see some English, and also um, get to know how to use that in English. Also play your video games in English, please. Okay, you can certainly do that. And you can create an English learning environment for yourself anytime, anywhere you want. Okay, and one more I want to introdu introduce to you is this one, TED, Ideas Worth Spreading. This is really a great website. A very nice website, TED. This website is a place where you get to listen to many wonderful speeches. Uh, and these people are all remarkable people in their own field. And you can, because um, there are so many speeches here, you might want to decide which one to listen to. So here you can resize it. Okay, that means search again by its uh, category. For example, maybe it's the newest releases. That means the new speeches. Or maybe you want to check this one, most emailed this week. That means a lot of people email this one to their friends. Or maybe it's courageous or fascinating or inspiring, okay? Or funny, okay? Then you can search again and find the ones you like. Okay, and let me find, let me introduce, for example, uh, you know Steve Jobs, um, uh, he gave the commencement speech at Stanford University in the year 2005.就是非常有名的Steve You can find it here also. Okay, so suppose you can always use this search, um, search button here. Okay, you just key in Steve Jobs. Okay. And then you'll be able to listen to his speech here, How to Live Before You Die. Okay, uh, this is the speech he gave. Okay, so this one is Steve Jobs' speech. Uh, let's watch a little bit. This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. Thank you. I'm uh, honored to be with you today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. Truth be told, uh, I never graduated from college, and uh, this is the closest I've ever gotten to a college graduation. <laughs> today, I want to tell you three stories from my life. That's it. No big deal. Just three stories. The first story is about connecting the dots. I dropped out of Reed College after the first six months, but then stayed around as a drop-in for another 18 months or so before I really quit. So why'd I drop out? It started before I was born. My biological mother was a young, unwed graduate student, and she decided to put me up for adoption. She felt very strongly that I should be adopted by college graduates, so everything was all set for me to be adopted at birth by a lawyer and his wife. Except that when I popped out, they decided at the last minute that they really wanted a girl. So my parents, who were on a waiting list, got a call in the middle of the night asking, we've got an unexpected baby boy. Do you want him? They said, of course. My biological mother found out later that my mother had never graduated from college and that my father had never graduated from high school. She refused to sign the final adoption papers. She only relented a few months later when my parents promised that I would go to college. This was the start in my life. And 17 years later, I did go to college. But I naively chose a college that was almost as expensive as Stanford. And all of my working class parents' savings were being spent on my college tuition. 
After six months, I couldn't see the value in it. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and no idea how college was going to help me figure it out. And here I was, spending all of the money my parents had saved their entire life. So I decided to drop out and trust that it would all work out okay. It was pretty scary at the time, but looking back, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. The minute I dropped out, I could stop taking the required classes that didn't interest me and begin dropping in on the ones that looked far more interesting. It wasn't all romantic. I didn't have a dorm room, so I slept on the floor in friends' rooms. I returned Coke bottles for the five-cent deposits to buy food with. And I would walk the seven miles across town every Sunday night to get one good meal a week at the Hare Krishna temple. I loved it. And much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. Let me give you one example. Reed College at that time offered perhaps the best calligraphy instruction in the country. Throughout the campus, every poster, every label on every drawer was beautifully hand calligraphed. Because I had dropped out and didn't have to take the normal classes, I decided to take a calligraphy class to learn how to do this. I learned about serif and sans serif typefaces, about varying the amount of space between different letter combinations, about what makes great typography great. It was beautiful, historical, artistically subtle in a way that science can't capture. And I found it fascinating. None of this had even a hope of any practical application in my life. But 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me. And we designed it all into the Mac. It was the first computer with beautiful typography. If I had never dropped in on that single course in college, the Mac would have never had multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. And since Windows just copied the Mac, it's likely that no personal computer would have them. Okay, so you can see that you can even see the subtitles, subtitles in English while you're watching it. It's really very convenient because you can get to know what exactly he was talking about. Um, but I'd like to show you one more thing because you can see that this one, you don't get to choose the subtitles. Um, but on this website, TED, there are many other speeches that you get to choose the subtitles. You have many speeches that you can choose the subtitles. It has huh? So let me show you this one. This is, uh, I want to show you, um, you probably know the movie, uh, which is called Eat, Pray, Love. Uh, and Julia Roberts was in the movie, right? Okay. And the author of the movie, Elizabeth Gilbert, was invited to give a speech at TED also. Okay, so let me show you her speech. Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay, so you get to see her here. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gilbert, um, Nurturing Creativity. Now let me click this one and show you a little bit. Wow, so many people have viewed it, right? So it's very popular here. And you get to see how many languages here? 44 languages. So this video, this speech has been translated into 44 languages. And you can easily find uh, Chinese there, and there's even simplified or traditional Chinese, okay? So you could, suppose you want to watch it the first time with Chinese subtitles, you can do that, okay? And then the second time you might want to watch it with English subtitles, then you can choose English, okay? Then it turns into English subtitles, very convenient. Best of all is that you can even download it. You can download this video, okay? Uh, for this speech, audio is not available yet, okay? But you can download the video, video one, okay? And there are many other speeches that you can download the audio files. And once you download the audio files, you can just follow the, um, the procedures we talk about how to practice listening and practice listening to the speeches on this website also. Okay, so this is really nice. 
I highly recommend this um, this website to you. Very nice website, TED. Okay.